Today we have a very practical video, especially in software engineering, where the average dev spends something like 18 months at a roll. And that's what is sort of the prep we have to do before we're about to job hop. And, you know, we don't just job hop for any reason, but whatever your reason may be, it's important to make sure that we're successful at it. Because if you're looking to leave a current job and move on to better opportunities, you need to make sure that you can do that and that it is a better opportunity. So we're going to be going through about five or seven uh, tips I have that I've used as someone who has job top uh, quite a bit in, in his career and uh, his career in my career. <laughs> I'm talking about and Dylan. These are Dylan's tips. We're going to start talking to myself in the third person. But we're going to be talking about how to job hop successfully and make sure you handle all the preparation that's required because you don't want to just do it to do it and you don't want to waste your time while doing it because getting a job is a task uh, and getting a new job is just as much of a task. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to make sure that we're prepared and we're successful. I want to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. Dev Mountain has various programs from iOS development to UI UX, full stack web development, and quality assurance. I actually had the pleasure of visiting one of their campuses about two years ago in Provo when they still had a location there. And it was a fantastic experience just to be able to meet everybody, see the campus, and it one thing that's unique about them is they actually include housing with their tuition. So if you're interested, check the link in the description below. So uh, before we get going, I just wanted to uh, say hashtag road to 100,000. So could you please subscribe? There's something, one of my goals, something I'm trying to accomplish. Second disclaimer, uh, if for some reason my work is watching this, I'm not looking to jump jobs. You'll know because I'll put, uh, when it happens, you'll be aware, because <laughs> I'm not one of those people to shy away and do it in the shadows. <laughs> no, um, but uh, that's, that's more of a joke. I'm actually pretty happy where I'm at. <laughs> um, something about being full remote just puts a smile on my face. I'm pretty happy. Uh, but yeah, so when you're looking to, when you're deciding that, hey, I it's time to move on, the first thing that you need to do is to find why. And this may seem silly because you're like no it's just time why is it time what what and and the reason for that and I, I i quite literally would write it down on a whiteboard piece of paper a word doc whatever it is because we need to find what it is we're looking for in our next opportunity we need clearly defined goals because you don't want to job hop from one bad situation or one situation i should say it's not working for it's not even necessarily bad i've left jobs that at the end of the day, I was just wanted to learn more. It wasn't about money. That was sort of a secondary thing. It was I wanted to go and become a better developer. And I even turned down roles that paid 20% more for another job that because I thought that was going to help me accomplish that. And it did. And so you need to have clearly defined goals of what it is you're looking for, what it is you want to keep as well. That doesn't mean that you're going to hate everything in your current job or it just didn't work out for you. There may be things that you're like, these are items I want in my next role. These are items I want to keep in my next role. And these are items I'm looking to gain and actually define that. And that could be benefits, could be salary. It could be a different type of role. Maybe there's no room for advancement in your current organization and you say hey i want to go from um senior to manager senior to tech lead those are things that you need to define as to what your objective is when you job hop it's not just enough to job hop and it could honestly be that dude i'm miserable uh, we chose we chose the bad one team we chose the bad one it's a bad bad company they done tricked me uh, and uh we'll have some videos about how you can avoid that in the future but you need to have clearly defined goals the next thing is you need to have a realistic timeline. Getting a job is a full-time task and, and something that isn't doesn't happen overnight. And so you want to get started ahead of time. If you're starting to feel the stress or the wear and tear, or losing hope, um, you know, there's lots of reasons people jump jobs. You need to get started ahead of time and you have to have a realistic timeline. So I would say on the low end, three months, on the high end, six months. And it could take longer, it took, could take shorter. It really depends. It depends how picky you are. As I, I can get a job in about two weeks, but is it a job I'm going to want? Is it, a, 
<laughs> is a job that's going to be better than my current job is a job that's going to be at a good organization meet the the items i define and the answer is no um i have to turn down about i i get three to five recruiters a day that message me and i would say about nine out of ten are just eliminated off the bat on my end because they're the wrong type of role they're not what i'm looking to do the money's not right the benefits aren't right and it's not even a conversation and, you know as you go and define what's going to work for you you need to be true to yourself and if you are it's going to be a little bit of a process typically so you need to set a realistic expectation the good news is it gives you a lot of time to do what the next few items we're going to talk about but i bring that up because oftentimes people wait until we're most people are procrastinators by nature and i'm not saying i'm the best example of not being that i've definitely suffered from that in the fa- in the past but we want to be proactive in our lives and especially our careers, right? Uh, being proactive in your career typically means you're going to have a better career and be happier with your career and happier with the choices that you've made. And this is no different when you're looking to change uh, your occupation or change your employer. So you want to be proactive with it and not wait to the breaking point where it's like, dude, I got to get out of here. Any job will do. And I've, I've done that and that's it's clearly a mistake. <clears throat> so... The next thing you need to define, especially in a technical field, is what do you need to learn or even brush up on? These are items that say, cool, I want to be a tech lead. Well, what's important for a tech lead? Um, I don't know. Let's go see. Let's go see. You know, I want to be a manager in dev, right? What is the important? So you need to go and define these things. And it's actually really easy to find what you need to learn and brush up on. One, um, you go and actually look at the roles, the applications as you're filling them out. You go and see what it is people are asking for. They say, hey, for a senior engineer, this is what they're looking for. For a dev manager, this is what they're looking for. This is what they are they want. And we go and we see, are, do, we feel, do we feel at a professional level that we are competent in this? And, you know, what are things that are on there that we don't have? They said, all these are asking for SQL. Go and learn SQL. You're like, all these are asking for me to be familiar with Agile. Go and spend a weekend doing Agile. Do some Agile certs, whatever it is. We need to go see what those future roles are looking like because just because you may have worked a job in two years, two years the landscape may have shifted, not going to absolutely change. And even if you're going the same job category, same job, you're going from one senior dev role to another senior dev role or one junior dev to mid-level dev, you need to make sure that your skills are reflective of what the job market wants. And oftentimes it just takes a little bit of tweaking, which brings us to my next point. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so we want to make sure our LinkedIn is updated and our resume is updated. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you watched any of my other videos talking about LinkedIn and resume is you should typically be updating as you go. When you have nice personal accomplishments where your objective here is to Every once in a while, you have something that's really cool that's really you remember very vividly. Like right when you hit that milestone, it's nice to put that on your resume uh, because all of it so, sort of becomes a blur <laughs> over time. And you want to keep your resume and LinkedIn updated. Now, besides those sort of cool, you know, it, especially if you can throw stats in there, stats are always nice because it it, it shows improvement. It shows you know shows growth rather than just gr- rather than something occurred something occurred this was the result i had because you have to remember businesses are businesses and they like to see things improving and making money the other thing is when we are doing our resume and linkedin we want to write our achievements and our items in such a way that it mimics the job apps that we're filling out so once you go and fill out about 100 job apps you'll start to see how the ones that you are interested in are sort of going to start looking very similar like for me I am very interested in quality code and testing when it comes to software um, engineering. And by the end of it, I start seeing very similar um, job applications. And my resume mirrors, and my LinkedIn oftentimes mirrors what is on the job app in the sense of this is how they write the statements. This is what they're looking for. And then I try to take my personal experience. I'm not saying copy and paste what's there. What I'm saying is, Typically, a job app might have, like, if you really think about, like, 10 to 15 bullet points. In my resume, I try to make sure that I'm hitting those 10 to 15 
bullet points so that they it's almost like here's a resume that's perfect for this job app and you'll you'll do much better because now you're sort of i'm not saying create a resume tailored to it but if you're applying for one or two roles and they're all sort of very similar you'll start hitting the you'll the, you'll be what the recruiter is looking for at the end of the day uh the um next thing is a generic cover letter um, I like to do something very different with my cover letter than a lot of other people. You know, um, I create a generic cover letter and I just swap in the company's name for the most part. In my generic cover letter, I have a couple things. One, I have uh, in I have a couple bullet points and I have basically three sentences. Um, and in bold, in that first uh, sentence or so, I typically include the main skills and the years of experience I have, right? So if I if I say something like um, JavaScript engineer, um, three to f you know, I, I might say um, three to four years experience in X Y Z, uh, do something like that, and then I include a link. I include links to all my stuff, right? But in about three sentences, I tell you a story about who I am. And why? To me, it's important that that's what your cover letter should do: to introduce yourself, say this is who I am, and this is why you want me. So I do that in three sentences, and it makes them understand why you're a different type of candidate and why you're they're the candidate that you want. That's what I do, and occasionally I might tweak it, but I would say generally you want to have a generic cover letter, just because it's you're going to be filling out apps, man, and, and apps take a while to fill out. And most don't even require cover letters anymore. It's that sort of a bonus, and so it's a good thing to have. The the final thing I would say is reach out to your references and get some references. By default, I include references on my resume. I'll have a reference to pretty much every job that, except my current one, unless they know I'm looking for a role. Um, I have a reference to pretty much every role I've had, or if I'm at my current role, uh, some colleagues that I'm close with, I'll say, hey, man, this is what's going down. Uh, <laughs> do you mind? You might be in a reference. But let them know. Give them a heads up. Uh, they don't want to be caught off guard. And, you know, include that so that, you know, recruiters can get up and running. But that's really it. At, besides that, in those three to six months you're prepping, that's what you're doing. You're prepping. Looking for a job is a full-time job. You want to make sure you brush up on those skills. You want to make sure that you're learning new skills. You don't just want to be filling out job apps. You, you're, The idea when job hopping is to get into a better position, right? Whether it's a new career, whether it's more money, better benefits, more learning opportunities, more room for growth, whatever it may be. That's the idea here. And you have to grow while you're filling out these apps. And if you do, you'll you'll job hop very, very well. And it's something that I've I've done a couple times. But you want to not just be filling out apps, you want to be continuing your growth very rapidly with a goal in mind as you're filling out those apps. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. There are links to my courses, such as the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge, specifically designed to help you interview for those front end engineer roles and uh, prep you for that. And you can get that in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.